Today I'll be showing you how I painted this little bird in graphite. Hi there, my name is Michelle Cashmore and in today's demonstration I'll be using graphite. Graphite is a great medium for beginners as it doesn't require much in the way of supplies and the supplies you do need are usually quite inexpensive. It also means that you don't have to worry about colour so you can just really focus on those tones. So for this demonstration I'll be drawing this little bird. I'm using Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencils and the paper I'm using is Fabriano Artistico Traditional White Hot Press Watercolour Paper and my reference for this piece came from Paint My Photo so if you'd like to paint this same little bird then you can get the reference from there. Now let's move on to the demonstration itself. To start off with I'm working on the little branch that the bird is sitting on. I usually like to start with the surroundings first and in this case I'm going to start with the darkest areas so that I can get a good reference of the range of tones in this piece. The softest, darkest pencil available in the Faber-Castell 9000 range is the 8B pencil. However, I don't go straight to that darkness of pencil, as the softer the lead, the harder it is to get a fine point on them and they can't get into the tooth of the paper. So if you go straight to an 8B, you'll find little specks in the paper. So to counter that, I use a much harder pencil first of all to add the first layers, so a 2H and even sometimes a B on top of that and then I build my way up to the, the softer darker pencils and I get a much darker overall result. The branch has a lot of texture in it so what I'm doing is I'm mapping out my darker areas first and then adding the lighter layers afterwards. This allows me to keep track of where I am. I am looking at, at my reference photo carefully here to make sure that I get the, the shadows and the overall form of the branch correct but I'm not going for completely exact, I'm just going for close enough as there's so much texture and so much variation in this branch it would, ta it would take forever to get it absolutely perfect. Close enough is good enough. You can see here how I'm working in layers to build up slowly to the darkness that I want. It is easier to darken a lighter area than it is to lighten a darker area so it's good to go gradually and build up the layers. That said, you can lighten up an area in graphite to a good degree, so it's not the end of the world if you do go too dark. It's also important to have contrast in your drawing, so make sure that your lights are light enough and your darks are dark enough. That will really help to make your drawing pop. As I work through the drawing, you'll see me use what looks like a black pen. This is the Tombow Mono Eraser, and it's absolutely fantastic for picking out small details as you can get a really really fine point on it. So I've been using it here to pick out some highlights on the branch. Now that the branch is finished it's time to move on to the bird. I start with the eye as again it's one of the darkest areas of the drawing so it makes a good point of reference to have my darkest areas in first. Here I'm being careful to leave the white of the paper for the highlight in the eye. It's such a small area that it would be difficult to pick out with an eraser so I need to make sure and keep that area clean. For the feathers, I'm careful to make sure that my pencil strokes go in the right direction and are the right length. So the feathers on his head are quite short and fluffy, so I'm being careful to reflect that. You can see here how I'm building up my darks in progressive layers again. Apologies for the glare of the reflected light in the dark areas here. The light I was using to work from in the room is reflecting off it unfortunately. Now even though this bird has white feathers, they're not actually white. A lot of them will be varying shades of grey. Very few areas on this drawing will actually be completely white. It's important to pay close attention to what the reference photo is actually telling you. For white feather or furs, if you're working in grayscale as I am here, then there will usually be varying tones of grey, and very little of it will actually be the, the lightest tone of all. If you're working in colour then you'll find that white feathers and fur reflect off what's around them. So you might find that it has a yellow cast, a blue cast, purple cast or green, just depending on what's around your subject. Now look at how short his feathers around his beak are compared to the feathers towards the back of his head. It's important to pay close attention to these. Also the feathers around his beak are kind of choppy looking and cast a lot of shadows, so I'm being careful to pay close attention to that. The sheet of translucent paper you can see under my hand as I work is called glycine. 
I like to use it as a barrier between my hand and whatever I'm working on as it prevents me from smudging my work or from transferring any oils from my hands. The good thing about it is that nothing sticks to it which makes it really effective for this purpose. Now the left hand side of the bird is in shadow. You can see how dark I'm going here even though they are still white feathers. It's important to push that contrast as I said before. What I can also do here is use the Tombow Mono Eraser to go back and pick out fine lines to help build up the layers of feathers. This helps to make the birds look really fluffy. You can also see here that I'm varying the direction of the feathers just slightly to make it look like they are in clumps or clusters rather than all being completely parallel to each other. This is important to help make the feathers look natural. It's a similar case when drawing fur. You can't have it all going exactly the same way and looking too uniform because then it just won't look natural. As before, paying close attention to the reference to make sure that I get the lights and darks in the right place, particularly as the shadows are falling quite strongly in places here. You might see a large brush being used at various points here. This is a drafting brush that I'm using and I'm just using that to sweep crumbs and specks off my work as I go, particularly when I'm using the eraser. It just helps to keep my surface clean. Often I'll get an area to almost completed and then move on to the next area, but you might see me go back and revisit areas. This is just to touch up the, the contrast or to make adjustments based on the new work that I've done. I do like to work around the piece and complete it as I go, but I'm also not afraid to go back and make adjustments later on. For the most part, I haven't used any blending tools on this piece, as there's so much texture on the branch and the feathers that the pencils themselves do most of the work I need. On smoother areas, such as the shadow under the beak, I do use a little blending tortillon sometimes just to smooth out the graphite. Now that I'm moving on to the area that the light is hitting, I'm using much harder lighter pencils and working with a very light hand just to keep this area light. I'm still working in shadows and most of it is still not pure white but it's a lot lighter than the area that's in shadow. Now that I'm moving on to the wing, the feathers here are much more clearly marked and separated. Here I'm just applying the lines first uh, to make sure that I don't lose my place when I fill them in with a darker tone. I'm just building up that texture for the wings, again being very careful to keep a close eye on my reference photo. When working in such fine detail as I am here for this bird, it's important to keep your pencils sharp. So I used to use a handheld Coombe Long Point Sharpener, which I still really like but found that it got blunt quite quickly. I now use a helical sharpener which is really good for keeping those long fine points. I also keep a sandpaper block which is really good for just sharpening off to a small point when you don't want to do a full sharpen which can waste pencil. The tail is a bit further away than the rest of the bird and is less in focus so I'm overlapping my layers here and just getting a slightly softer look here than I am in the rest of the bird. As the tail was so dark and had so many layers of graphite, I did have to be careful to keep the paper around it clean, as particles of dust from the pencils did come off and scatter a little bit, so you can see me there just cleaning up the paper around it. Always make sure that your erasers are clean when trying to do this sort of clean up, because if they're dirty then they can leave a dark smudge in the paper which can be impossible to remove. Now I'm moving on to the bird's claws. Now, the claws had quite a lot of contrast on them, a lot of areas that were very light and a lot of areas that were very dark, so I'm just trying to reflect that as best as possible. Again, lots of fine details in small areas, so just making sure to keep the points of my pencil sharp. Bird's feet and claws are one of those areas that actually look quite unusual close up. It's important to pay close attention to what you're looking at, as there's usually a lot of lumps and ridges and fine lines and just a lot of things to pay close attention to that you might not have realised otherwise. I actually had to rework this area a few times to get it the way that I wanted it to look as my first attempt didn't look quite right. Here I realised that the branch should have been darker than the foot so I went back and darkened that up a tad as well. And there we have the finished piece. And that is it for this video. 
I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more or be kept up to date with what I'm working on, then please do subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, or at my website, michellecashmoreart.com. I hope to see you again soon.